Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to share with all of you the view that we have in Thelsa Group about the still long uh, products market. I will start my presentation with a review of the macroeconomic uh, situation, trying to do a link between macroeconomic situation and the steel use. We will move later to the construction sector overview. I will give you some figures regarding the steel industry. And of course, as in the last uh, meeting, uh, we will have updated information regarding the long product consumption worldwide, focusing on rivers for sure. And we will fin finalize the presentation with a review of the international market price situation. So let's start with the macroeconomic prospect. In the screen, you can see three different uh, forecasts made for this from the same source, International Energy Monetary Fund, uh, but made in different uh, months and different uh, years. On the left-hand side of the screen, you can find the forecast made in July 2017. We use this forecast in our AIREPAS meeting in Athens. On the center of the screen, you can see the forecast that we use in our last AIREPAS meeting in Warsaw. And on the right-hand side, you can find the latest uh, outlook update from the International, International Monetary Fund. So let me remind you that we have realized during the last 30 years, 30 years sorry, that there is a strong correlation between global economy uh, growth rate and the uh, still apparent demand. When the global economy is growing clearly above uh, 3%, there is a healthy recovery of the steel demand. And on the contrary, when the global economy is performing around 3% or below that, uh, there is an stagnation in the uh, steel demand. That's why it's so important to, to focus on what is going to happen with the global economy uh, during the next months. So in Athens, we realize that uh, the economy has improved during 2016. The prospect uh, for 2017 at that time were better. The global economy uh, was supposed to grow at 3.5% uh, uh, during the last conference of Athens for the year 2017. And the atmosphere uh, that we got from that meeting was uh, positive. Then we moved to Warsaw, and then we clearly really realized that the economy has performed better in 2017 than it has uh, first uh, forecasted. The International Monetary Fund was giving a forecast of 3.9% of uh, growth for uh, this year and the contribution of the advanced economy was uh, improving, 2.3%, as you can see in the screen, and also the contribution of the emerging market and the developing economies was also growing. For the year 2008, International Monetary Fund uh, set 4.9%. Uh, so uh, we saw uh, brighter prospects uh, in Warsaw, and the atmosphere was, uh, I should say, that uh, very optimistic. From that moment, we start to suffer some, uh, let's say, trade wars, uncertainty appear in the market with the truth, uh, 232 section from the state, the reaction of the European Union with the CEFO were closed, and a lot of measures in different countries of, of the world. So uh, it's difficult to, to know where we are. There is a lot of uncertainty in the steel markets, but the end, we don't have to forget this, that the main driver of the steel uh, consumption in the world is the economic development. And two months ago, only the International Monetary Fund has reconfirmed his last forecast, saying that the global economy will healthy growth 3.9% this year and 39 also for the next year. Improving uh, 
the contribution of the advanced economy for this year up to 2.4% in comparison with the last forecast, and improving in 2019 the contribution of the emerging markets up to 5.1%. So, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes the tree uh, don't let us to see the forest. We are uh, in a difficult moment for the uncertainty in the steel market, but don't forget that if the global economy performs better, we will enjoy a good uh, steel consumption for the next months and for the next year. And on top of that, the picture of the global growth uh, is very positive because all the main economies of the world will be growing at a synchronized pace for this year and the next one. You can find only some small economies painted uh, in an orange color that means that they will be in recession this year, like uh, Venezuela, South Sudan, or Yemen. But if you have a look to India or China, you would realize that the growth will be higher than 6%, and this would be one big engine of the world. So let's see what is happening in the construction sector, what are the prospects for the next year, because at the end, uh, the, main, the major part of the loan products that we produce uh, end in this uh, sector. Well, I have some information recently update for the Construction Intelligence Center, and they said that the medium term fundamentals remain solid. Global construction sector will grow at an average of 3.6% a year in the period 2018-2022 and is expected to rise the construction sector over 20% to $12.7 trillion by 2022. According to BMA research, medium-term uh, fundamentals, as I said before, remain also solid. Uh, you can see in the slide the uh, growth in the different construction areas of the world. For example, the soft uh, blue columns representing Asia will improve uh, its performance next year, but not only Asia, also the developed economies, uh, so Europe and the states combined, will grow at a pace of 2.7% this year and the next one in comparison with only 2% last year. The construction sector that will be growing at the highest speed during this year will be sub-Saharan countries and MENA countries, but of course the weight of uh, these areas in the construction sector for the time being is small. So let's focus uh, on the different construction market. For example, in the States, according to CRH, overall the perspective for 2018 is for continued growth after a good 2017. The main driver will be residential, that they will grow at 6%, and the total construction output this year will be 5% higher. Geographically, the south and the west will likely to be the key regions uh, in the state. And if you have a look to the map on the right high sand of the screen, you will find that Texas, Nevada, and New Mexico will be leading the growth in the states. Looking ahead, for the medium term, prospects uh, remain also strong in the state with an acceleration of the residential sector during the period 2018-2022. If these prospects are correct, uh, the United States construction sector will be growing for 10 consecutive uh, years after leaving the recession in 2010. The picture is worse in Russia. In Russia, Mid-term prospect only show a modest growth. The structures and infrastructure sector will return to a pace of growth this year, but we will have to wait till 2019 to see black figures in residential sector. And in addition, the growth will be, let's say, uh, very poor during the next years. European Union, these figures uh, were got from the last Euroconstruct meeting in June this, uh, this year, after a very good year in 2070, if you follow the purple line, uh, when the construction sector grew 3.9%, forecast for this year is only 2.7% at deceleration in the coming years. Of course, in Europe, we are far away from the construction level that we got in 2007. 
they are great different in, inside Europe. Uh, those countries that uh, are in the south of Europe, for example, Spain, the red line, or Italy, the soft blue line, will have more room to, to grow in the coming years because they are far away from the levels of 2007. Other countries that will have a healthy growth in the coming years will be Hungary, Poland, Ireland, and Portugal. And on the contrary, those countries in the north of Europe that have achieved some years ago the level uh, of 2007 uh, will stop growing in the next year, like Finland, Germany, or Sweden. But the main construction market uh, for the rivers consumption today is Asian countries. In this uh, slide prepared by Oxford Economists, if you follow the goal line, you will see the performance of the construction sector in China. It will slightly drop during the next years, below 5%. But don't forget that a slowdown in the growth rate doesn't mean to decrease the consumption. It doesn't mean that the pace of growth will be slow. So if China continue growing at the this speed, we will realize later uh, the consequences for the steel consumption. For sure, India will take the witness of uh, China in the next year. According to us, for economies, the construction sector in India will grow above 20% from the year 2019 and ahead. Imagine the huge population of India. It's true that the consumption per head in India are very slow, but if we multiply by a, by a huge population, you will realize that the contribution of India to the steel consumption in the next year will be much higher than today. We have also the Asian Tigers countries, uh, like Singapore, uh, South Korea, and so on. They have a worse uh, performance uh, last year, they will improve slightly this year, but we'll have to wait till 2019 to see uh, real growth in, in this construction sector. And of course, Asian Tiger Cups start to roar because they will be growing at a speed higher than 10% in the next years. So all in all, the prospects for the Asian countries construction sector are very good. But looking even ahead, if we have to make a forecast for the next 10 years, the only information available that I got was a research made during this summer uh, by BMI Institute. They are forecasting that the construction output uh, in China will be almost double in nominal value during the next 10 years. Imagine growing at, at a pace of 5% uh, during 10 years means a huge growth of the construction sector in China. North America, with Mexico and United States, also will contribute to the expansion of the global construction output. China will be, for sure, uh, the biggest construction market. The second uh, will be the United States, but India will appear in the picture as the third construction market during next year, surpassing, surpassing Japan. So, as you can see, long-term fundamentals also appear uh, brilliant for the construction sector. So, let's see if, uh, what is happening in the in steel industry today. Are the steel industry reflecting uh, this uh, nice uh, prospect from the macroeconomic point of view and from the forecast of the construction sector? Well, we don't have updated forecasts from World Steel. Uh, this uh, slide I present uh, eating our last uh, Warsaw meeting. After a year 2015 with a decrease of the steel use in, in the world, the growth in 2016 was very poor and it improved in 2017 with a final steel product consumption of 1,587 million tons. For this year, in April, World Steel uh, made a forecast of 1,616 million tons, upgrading the first column uh, for 2018. What World Steel was thinking is that the consumption in China will be the same than last year. And for 2019, they were forecasting the expected decrease in the 
steel consumption in China. But if we have a look to last updated information uh, got also from world steel, if we have a look to the crude steel production of the world during the last seven months of, uh, of this year, you can uh, realize that the gray columns that represent uh, the crude steel production on a monthly basis updated till July has been surpassing the line of the 150 million tons per month. This is the highest uh, production of steel ever reported. So crude steel production is growing in the world. The red columns represent the production in, in China, and the blue columns represent the production in the rest of the world. As you can see, the red columns today are higher compared with the blue columns, and that means that China is producing more than 50% of the steel worldwide. If you follow the lines, the red line represents the growth uh, year on year of the steel production in China, and the blue line in the rest of the world. Of course, red line is above the blue line, and that means that the crude steel production is growing more in China than in the rest uh, of the world. So with uh, an average uh, crude steel production increase of 5%, we can find that the, all the areas are contributing to this uh, growth in the steel production. China is 6%, above the average, and the rest of the world is between 2 and 5 percent, with the main exception of Middle East that have uh, grown its uh, steel production 16 percent this year. So what is going to happen with the steel production this year? In the screen, you can follow the, the line for the last 20 years. It has doubled the steel production uh, worldwide. What is going to happen in 2018 and 2019? If we follow the forecast of war steel regarding the finished steel products, uh, you will get the discontinuous blue line only. But if you take into consideration the last updated information till July, we will follow the, the green line. In any case, both uh, forecasts made a crude steel production for this year higher than 1,700 million tons, continuing the trend of the last uh, years where there was only three valleys in the steel production in 1998 with the Asian financial crisis, of course, in 2009, and in 2015, that is uh, in our memory, because it was, uh, it was hard times, let's say. Well. Of course, the consequence of the increase of the steel production in the wall is the improvement of the crude steel capacity utilization ratio. That uh, we had a peak in June this year of 78.9 worldwide, and this is the highest figure for the last two years and a half. From the beginning of the year, this ratio has been above 70%. And for, from April, it's about 75%. You know that this ratio is uh, linked directly with the profitability of the steel sector. So you can imagine that uh, these figures correspond with an improvement of the financial uh, results of the steel industry. But this ratio is related, on the one hand, with the production but, of course, with the crude steel capacity. What has happened with the crude steel capacity during last year? Well, I got these two graphs from a report issued by the OECD uh, institution. It has been uh, issued only one week ago. Uh, you can find the web page when, where you can download this uh, report, and I recommend you to... to download this report and to read it in detail, because not only uh, make a revision of the evolution of the crude steel production during last year, but in addition it make a forecast for the next uh, two or three years, and I will show you later. Well, in any case, the good news is that the crude steel capacity has decreased for the second consecutive year in 2017. Is the, you can find it in the 
uh, graph uh, number A. It's on the left-hand side uh, of the screen. You can see that the contribution of the OECD countries combined with the European Union has been rather stable. It's the dark uh, surface. But the increase of the crude st steel production capacity has been uh, in the rest of, of the world. So if you move to the right-hand graph, you will follow the increase of the crude steel capacity on percentage every year. You can realize that it has uh, been decreasing from 2002, the trend of growth. It has been decreasing, and during 2016 and 2017, it was below the zero axis, and that means that we have a decrease of the production capacity. So the reduction in global crude steel making capacity last year combined with an increase of the steel production makes that the overcapacity have decreased. Today, OECD estimates that the overcapacity in the world is around 561 million tons. If you have a look to the left-hand side graph, the brown line represents the capacity the blue line, the real production, and then the columns are the overcapacity. And this has decreased from around 700 million tons in 2015, when all the Chinese steel was uh, dumping the world, uh, to a figure today more reasonable of 561 million tons. The consequence of this decrease of the crude the steel production capacity is the improvement of the right-hand graph in the capacity utilization ratio. Last year, the average of the world was around 75, but you can compare with the great times in 2007, was, and it was only some points above 80%. And remember that, for example, Trump, when he issued the 232 measures, said that they will remain till the production capacity utilization ratio will get 82% in the states. We are not so far worldwide of this figure. Remember that we got in June 78.9% in the global picture. So if the production continues to grow and the production capacity remains, let's say, stable, we will achieve uh, figures for, of the capacity utilization ratio close to 80% very soon. In this report that I said you that OECD have uh, issued one week ago, they have a review of all the investment in new production capacities that are planned uh, in the world, and they make an estimation of what could be the increase of production capacity in the next two, three years. There are some projects uh, underway, and some projects that are planned and maybe will be finished or not, depending on the market condition. If you follow the bottom uh, line of this table, the production capacity decreased 1.3% last year. Underway, there are 52 million tons of uh, new projects, maybe 39 additional uh, million tons. So that means that the capacity in 2020 will be between 2,300 million tons to 2,342 million tons. So this means a growth between 2.3% and a 4%. Production capacity will be growing in Asia, a modest uh, rate growth, also in these countries, Latin America, but have a look to the figure of uh, Middle East and Africa. The huge increase of production capacity appears. Middle East will have in four years more than 150 million tons of uh, production capacity, and their consumption, of course, is lower than that. Anyhow, for me, this picture represents good news, because if the production capacity remains growing between 2 and 4 percent in the next year, and the steel consumption in the world grows at a higher rate, that means that the overcapacity will be slightly reduced during the coming years. That means higher um, ratio of the crude steel capacity utilization ratio, 
and that means more profitability for the steel industry in the coming, uh, let's say, months and years. But what is happening in China? Because China is the, the key issue uh, for us. Of course, uh, we have discussed a lot of Turkey in the, in the previous presentation, but don't forget that Riva's consumption in, in Turkey is only 2 3% of the, the world. What is important for the Rivas industry worldwide is what is happening in China and what is going to happen. China, as I told you before, was increasing the production of steel, but at the same time, export from China have been decreasing from 2015. And there are, there are only, there is only one possible explanation. Internal demand in China is growing, much more than expected. We have some concern regarding the rebound of the export from China from the beginning of the year. I show you this uh, concerning our last uh, meeting in Warsaw. But if we compare the export during the first month uh, this year, uh, red column compared with the last year, we can see that they are lower. So that means that at the end of the year, the steel exports uh, from China will be below the level of uh, 2000. And 17. It's difficult to find the information in, uh, about China. You never know if the information is reliable or not. But in any case, I, I got this information from the National Bureau of Statistics of China. Uh, they have some information in the investment of real estate, and you can realize following the red line that the accumulated growth rate in the real estate in China is at rates of 10%. So that means more consumption of steel and, of course, more reverse consumption. I got from also from the National Bureau of Statistics in China the reverse output. They publish uh, on a monthly basis. And these uh, are the black columns. The blue line represents the growth rate of uh, the reverse output in the Chinese industry. You can see that at the left uh, hand side of the graph, the line was below the zero axis, and that means that the reverse output was decreasing. 2016, there are some months above, some months below. That means stable cons uh, output, stable production of rivers. But in years 2017 and 2018, the line is clearly above zero. That means that Chinese producers are producing more rivers than in the past. The rivers production is growing, but at the same time, they are out of the international market. So that means that all these rivers are being consumed internally. Another important change that we can observe in China is the percentage of the steel uh, manufactured through electrical furnace. It's growing. Uh, the Chinese government has set a target of achieving 20% of the steel production through electrical furnace route by 2020. So according to Platts that uh, has made some calculation, this means an additional consumption of uh, graphite electrodes of 218,000 tons per year by the year 2020. So this is important to take into account because the structure the cost structure of the electrical arc furnace uh, will probably change in the future. Some information regarding the long product consumption. In the presentation, there are a lot of figures. I, I want only to focus on the main one. For example, long product consumption. This year, we have a consumption in the first half of the year of 409 uh, million tons. So if we extrapolate this figure to the end of the year, with a growth of 2.2%, we will get a total figure of 833 million tons, which is in line with the figure that we got in the year 2013 and 2014. All type of loan products uh, were growing during the first half of this year. You can see the figure for rivers, 187 million tons, 100 and 2 million tons for wire rod, 29 for sections, and 91 for merchant barge. If we extrapolate these figures, uh, multiplying each product um, by its uh, growth rate that is uh, different for the different products, we will get the picture that you can see in the screen. 
I would like to mention that the Rivas consumption is giving a estimated figure of 391 million tons, which is the highest Rivas consumption ever reported. We will see in the next meeting if we have achieved uh, this figure or not. Product mix has benefited Rivas against merchant bars and wire rod during, during last year, so the picture today of the long products consumption worldwide is this. 46% for reinforcing bars, 25% for wire rod, 7% sections, and 22% merchant bars. If we split by, by areas of the world, Asian markets represent 67% of total long produce consumption and China along 55%. Overall, as I said, the long steel produce have grown 2.2% this year, and East and Southeast Asia consumption were dragging the, the growth of long produce consumption during the first half of the year. Not China, that we saw before that it was growing, but other Asian countries like uh, Tiger Economies had a bad performance during the first half of this year. So the picture uh, for long products uh, consumption per area is uh, like this, 67% in South and, uh, Southeast Asia, this plus Turkey, 5%, rest of the world, 17 European Union, 7%, and North America, only 5%. Well, Information of other long products, 0.3% uh, growth for wire rod, section 0.2, and merchant bars 1.5%. But let's focus in, in rivers. What is happening in, in rivers? Well, rivers has the, had the better performance of, top, of other long products. Overall, the, we can report a growth of 3.9%, with healthy growth in all the markets, with the exception of East and South. East Asia, as, as I said before, with a low uh, growth rate in some tiger economies, is dragging the global growth. This is the picture of rivers, very similar to total loan products, but take into account that this plus Turkey only represents 6%, it's a small, Turkey alone is between 2 and 3%. Domestic consumption, I mean, uh, comparing to world consumption, North America and Europe only represent 4%. So if we have to make a forecast by geographical area of the world, uh, I should say that uh, this year the rivers consumption in the European Union will be around 17 million tons, 14 million tons in North America, 252 in Asia, 24 in this plus Turkey, and 81 in the rest of the world. Total quantity will be 391 million tons, that I said is the ever figure ever reported. But for those that, uh, that could think that maybe this forecast is uh, uh, very optimistic, I try to find some uh, all the information uh, that was distributed in this uh, IREPAS meeting. And I, I got some figures from 1992. So you can see that Rivas consumption has multiplied by five during the last 25 years. In the first IREPAS meeting, we were speaking in 1992 of a Rivas consumption of around 80 million tons worldwide. And my forecast for this year is uh, 391. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am sure that the rivers consumption will be surpassing 400 million tons very, very soon, if not next year. Well, some information regarding the production and consumption in the different areas of the world. Today, the disequilibriums are not uh, very important, and in fact, the, the the rivers business will be maybe in the future more regional business because this trend has been enforced by all the barriers and trade wars that we are suffering right now. So let's finalize with a, a review of the international market price situation. The figures that you can see in the screen are figures I got from the news last week. 510 FOB for rivers, wire rod 560 in the Turkish uh, area, 
uh, and billets for, from Far East, let's say, sorry, for Black Sea, around $475 FOB. We can follow the spread uh, line, the black line, if we discount the scrap price from the international rivers price. It has improved from the last uh, summer up to $200, between $200 and 215 but this improvement was due to the uh, increase of cost of electrodes, uh, ferro alloys, uh, and other inputs. So at the end, we are more or less in the in the same net spread discounting the cost increase that we were during the last year in the international business. What is uh, strange uh, for me is that uh, if we compare the spread billet uh, river, uh, only the difference between the rivers and the billets and we compare with the total spread of the billets, the Billets spread has recovered from uh, mid of last year, as the rivers did, to, let's say, support the price increase. But the, the, the blue line has been decreasing and squishing. Today, the difference between rivers and billets is only $35, $40 maximum. So that means, from my point of view, that there is no space to price reduction in rivers with the current scrap uh, market price. And what is going to happen in the next uh, weeks with the international rivers price? Well, it's a difficult question, but I want to introduce you, it's not a new factor, but we forget about this, this factor uh, when we make forecasts for, for the international price. China's crackdown in pollution is having the intended effect. That is a fact, and you can see this in the left-hand side graph of the screen, where the air pollution index in Beijing last year, last winter, compared to the winter of 2016, have improved. But you don't have to forget that the Chinese government is decided to continue the war against uh, winter air pollution. So in addition to the cut of productions that apply to some uh, producer in the areas of Beijing, Taiyin, and Hebei, this year and in 2019, they plan to extend this cut of production to the neighbors. And you can see this in the right-hand side of the screen, that the area where cuts are going to be applied has been enlarged. According to Platts, that has made an estimation of what influence can have this in the crude steel production in China last year, they estimated that the cuts of production were around 50 million tons, and they expect for this year 40 additional million tons of cut production during winter time, so during four months. So 90 million tons in four months represent 20-something million tons per month. Remember that the crude steel production today is around 150 million tons if you discount 22. In, during four consecutive months, you can realize that this will have a clear impact in the price situation more than other factors that uh, sometimes uh, we think only in the scrap, in the scrap, in the scrap. Ladies and gentlemen, we are close to 80% of uh, production capacity ratio. So the rules that uh, manage the price till now probably will not be the same that the rules that will manage in the near future. Don't forget that. So there is a room for a possible increase of uh, rivers price in the coming weeks and months. So let's uh, finalize my presentation with some conclusion, some points that I would like that you remember tomorrow, let's say, <laughs> of my presentation. Well, despite the fact that uncertainty, volatility, and trade wars have taken over the long products steel market, and we feel that every day, Long produce demand will remain strong this year and the next one. Don't forget that. Especially in rivers, demand this year and the next one will surpass for sure historical records. Also, there are solid long-term fundamentals for rivers consumption. Indian tiger countries will compensate the slowdown in the China construction sector growth rate. So rivers consumption will continue growing in the next decade 
as it has been doing during the last 25 years. Probably Rivas will become a more regional business due to the balance of Rivas demand production in the different areas of the world, and of course enforced by the increasing protection barriers. And key risks uh, to consider in this uh, forecast, well, of course, China Rivas internal demand is the key factor. If we have a problem in China, all people in this room have a problem. That's very clear. Also, general geopolitical tension can unexpectedly dark the global growth and prospects that we are enjoying today. And of course, a possible domino effect of protectionist measures can limit the international commerce if the barriers are bigger, 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 and bigger, and that can contribute to a cooling down of the worldwide GDP and then a cooling of the steel consumption during the next let's say, months. And that's it. Thank you for your attention. So, any question? Any doubt? Any disagreement with this forecast? <laughs> yes. Please, Hugo. So what do you expect, because Turkey is now being uh, clearly out of the U.S. market, do you expect any European material to start being shipped again for the last quarter? Yes, but in Europe there is not many mills that can ship big uh, vessels to the state. So let's uh, see what is the balance of the imports in the state, of course. In the medium term, new capacities in the states uh, have been reported, so probably in two, three years' time, they, maybe they will be able to cover their internal demand. But in the, mean, uh, in the meantime, there are not many mills in Europe that can big ship vessels to the state, and, and it's a key factor to ship big vessels to the state. If you cannot ship 20,000 tons, 30,000 tons, the price is less competitive. So let's see. Today there are not many mills in Europe that can do that. Mm -hmm. And lastly, what is your bet about the outcome of the safeguard in Europe? Is it going to be a country-specific quota or a global one? It's a political decision. I, I, so I what would know. you do? <laughs> I, I, don't, I, I don't really know. I don't know. Sorry <laughs> for not answering this question. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.